Hello, so this video is on the psychology of obesity. In society, the use of food is far more than just to meet your nutritional needs. We even have specific foods to mark specific occasions. Food brings people together. The giving of food is the expression of love from one to another. Like that old song, sweets for my sweets, sugar for my honey. Um, we eat to heal and grow our bodies, but also to feed our emotions. Whether we are joyful, celebrating with cake, nourishing cold symptoms with soup, or mindlessly eating a box of chocolates in an effort to get through a breakup, um, food is there within that reach to cure our ills, what, whatever they may be. Emotional eating occurs when we are uh, stimulated to eat because of experiencing negative emotions or mood disorders such as stress, anxiety, and depression. We attempt to bring ourselves comfort when doing so. However, this action can lead to the development of eating disorders such as binge eating disorder or bulimia. Anorexia nervosa is another eating disorder when someone feels compelled to lose weight and attempts to avoid or reduce intake of calories and exercises excessively. However, it is the high calorie food intake that I am focusing on. Our tongue is equipped with taste buds which detect sweet, sour, bitter, and salty taste. Sweet and high fat foods are more pleasurable to eat. and We are driven to eat though these as a source of energy. Our tongue's ability to, bitter, to taste bitter and sour taste enables us to detect any food which may be poisonous or decayed and therefore not useful for our nutritional. In nature, sweet foods include berries, honey, fruits, sugar beets, sugar canes, among others. They have calories for energy and also important vitamins, minerals, and proteins. Our processed foods is a different matter. By combining sugars, fats, and even salt in food manufacturing foods become more pleasurable to eat. The term bliss point is used when a product has just the right amount of sugar, fat, and salt to optimize its palatable, palatability. In other words, to optimize your eating pleasure. This pleasure is experienced in your brain, but in a short-lived experience. Overeating occurs when we seek to prolong that experience, especially in our attempts to ease emotional pain. The problem is that uh, what you're eating is likely to cause more emotional pain in the long run, namely in the form of mood disorders such as stress, anxiety, and depression. Aside from the additional weight gain and self-directed negative thoughts about the weight, which can lead to be a consequence of mood disorders. Studies have shown that there is a link between an unhealthy diet and mood disorders. The consumption of high fat sugary foods does reduce symptoms of stress, anxiety, but only provides short term relief. Low levels of polyunsaturated fatty acids have been found to be linked to a high incident of depressive symptoms, although other studies have found that increasing omega-3 intake leads to a decrease in human depressive symptoms. On the other hand, high levels of saturated fat intake not only increases abdominal obesity, but have been found to be a causation causative factor in neurological impairments. The increase in abdominal obesity and or neurological impairments can lead to an increased vulnerability to stress, anxiety, and depression, which leads to overeating, and so the cycle continues. So I have a little comic here. This is what, it, what I'm saying is, do you need to drink this much blood to survive? <laughs> this is uh, slide number six. Unfortunately, mood disorders are underdiagnosed in obese people, or an assumption is made by the healthcare professionals that the obesity is the cause of the mood disorder and treats the obesity instead. It is also in the healthcare organization's interest to deal with the obesity issue due to the cost of the diabetes medication. You will see one example of this if you watch the movie on Netflix, The Man Who Ate Himself to Death. In it, you will see the story of Ricky Naputi, a man in his late 30s who weighed 900 pounds at his heaviest. You will see the story unfold um, of others trying to get help for Ricky to lose weight. You will hear the frustrations of his partner. You will hear the irritation from his doctor who is about to give up on Ricky for his lack of effort on his weight loss journey and who in fact berated Ricky for restarting his antidepressant medication instead. 
You will also hear the neutral but somewhat judgmental tone of the narrator as Ricky seemingly is not pulling his weight in dealing with his weight loss. If you listen really carefully, you will also really hear Ricky say how he feels better taking the antidepressants and his cravings are reduced. Somehow everyone misses this. The wife leaves him and by the end of the movie, Ricky is dead. He didn't eat himself to death as the title of the story suggests. He actually took an overdose of pills and committed suicide. Unfortunately, many uh, bar bariatric patients are doing the same post-surgery as their underlying mental condition gets, goes undiagnosed, even if they have successfully lost a large amount of weight. If you are obese and experiencing stress, anxiety, and or depression, speak to your healthcare professional if you would prefer to talk to someone else about this but are housebound. Please either contact a mental health support helpline or feel free to email me, and this is the person who did it, elevationpdc at AOL.com. Um, I am in the process of creating a webinar and choose and course which will assist you in overcoming the topics I raise in this blog. Um, I didn't see those or I would include those because I think they could be a great resource for other people. I just wanted to share this information that I found. Um, but I do advise you to seek local help so that these issues can be addressed. Whatever your size you are, you are worth your weight in gold and much more. So I have gold here to show that. But anyway, thank you for listening.